Have you ever wondered how one man could shake the foundations of the mighty Roman Empire? Our story begins with the birth of such a man, Attila the Hun, around the year 406 AD. Born into the harsh, unforgiving landscapes of Central Asia, Attila was the future leader of the Huns, a fierce and nomadic people. This rugged environment, paired with the relentless lifestyle of his tribe, served as the perfect crucible to mold a warrior. From an early age, Attila's life was a relentless cycle of survival, where the weak perished and the strong thrived. Amidst this brutal backdrop, he honed his skills in warfare and leadership. This was a world where a man's worth was measured by his courage and his ability to lead. And even as a boy, Attila showed signs of both. Even in his youth, Attila displayed a fierce spirit and a determination that marked him as a leader. From a young warrior to a formidable leader, how did Attila climb the ladder of power? The story of Attila's ascension is as fascinating as it is chilling. Not just a tale of personal ambition, but a saga of political maneuvering and strategic warfare that would leave an indelible mark on the annals of history. In the year 434 AD, Attila and his brother Bleda inherited the throne of the Huns, a nomadic tribe known for their fierce warriors and formidable horsemen. The brothers ruled jointly, a co-sovereignty that proved to be a volatile mix of shared power and sibling rivalry. Under their rule, the Huns became a force to be reckoned with. They expanded their territories and increased their influence, their reputation spreading far and wide. But it was their interactions with the Eastern Roman Empire that would put them on a collision course with history. Attila and Bleda signed a treaty with the Romans, a pact that was meant to ensure peace and mutual respect. The Huns agreed to provide military support to the Romans in exchange for annual tribute. Yet the relationship was fraught with tension. The Romans were wary of the Huns, their fear and suspicion veiled thinly behind a facade of diplomatic courtesy. The treaty, however, marked the beginning of Attila's conflict with Rome. The Huns were not content to remain allies or vassals. They yearned for more, for dominance and power that would make them not just equals, but superiors. When Bleda died under mysterious circumstances in the year 445 AD, Attila became the sole ruler of the Huns. The balance of power had shifted and the stage was set for Attila to embark on a reign of terror. His ambition was unquenchable, his thirst for power insatiable. He was no longer just a warrior or a joint ruler. He was Attila, King of the Huns, a name that would echo through the corridors of time, a symbol of terror and power that would forever be etched in the annals of history. But when Bleda died under mysterious circumstances, Attila took the reins of power and began his reign of terror. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? This age-old question takes us back to the mid-5th century as the Hunnic Empire under Attila waged relentless campaigns against both the Eastern and Western Roman Empire. Attila, a warrior king of the Huns, was a force of nature. His military genius and relentless determination saw him lead his armies on numerous invasions, shaking the very foundations of the Roman Empire. His ferocity in battle and the fear he instilled in his enemies earned him an ominous nickname, the Scourge of God. First, Attila turned his attention to the Eastern Roman Empire. He launched a series of campaigns ravaging the Balkans and reaching as far as the walls of Constantinople. The Eastern Roman Empire, although a formidable force, found itself on the back foot, struggling against Attila's onslaught. In the end, they were forced to sue for peace, agreeing to pay a hefty annual tribute to the Huns. Fresh from his victories in the east, Attila then turned his gaze westward. He led his forces across the Rhine and into Gaul, wreaking havoc and leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. The Western Roman Empire, already weakened by internal strife and barbarian invasions, was ill-prepared to face the Hunnic onslaught. The climax of Attila's campaigns against Rome came at the Battle of the Catalonian Plains. This was no ordinary battle, it was a clash of titans. On one side, Attila and his fearsome Hunnic warriors. On the other, a coalition of Roman and Visigothic forces led by the Roman general Aetius and the Visigothic king Theodoric I. The battle was fierce and bloody, with heavy casualties on both sides. But in the end, Attila was forced to retreat. It was a rare setback for the scourge of God, but it did little to diminish his reputation or influence. Attila's relentless campaigns and his victories against Rome had a profound impact on the Roman Empire. His invasions exacerbated the already present cracks within the empire, accelerating its decline. His name became synonymous with destruction and devastation, and his legacy lived on long after his death. Attila's influence was so great that some historians argue that his campaigns against Rome 
were a significant factor in the eventual collapse of the Roman Empire. Despite the might of Rome, this one man and his army managed to bring the greatest empire the world had ever seen to its knees. But as we know, history is a complex tapestry woven from the threads of countless events and individuals. Attila was undoubtedly a significant thread in that tapestry, but he was not the only one. The Roman Empire had been weakening from within long before Attila came onto the scene. His campaigns were just one factor, albeit a significant one, in a much larger and more complex picture. Despite his victories, Attila's greatest challenge was yet to come. Even the mightiest of warriors can stumble, but what led to Attila's fall? Attila, the scourge of God, was not invincible after all. His reign of terror across Europe was brought to a halt at the Battle of the Catalonian Plains. This pivotal encounter, fought in the mid-5th century, marked a turning point in Attila's fortunes. The Huns, under Attila's command, faced a formidable coalition of Roman and Visigoth forces. The Romans, led by General Flavius Aetius, and the Visigoths, under their King Theodoric, had put aside their differences to confront a common enemy. The battle was fierce and bloody, with heavy casualties on both sides. Despite Attila's tactical prowess and the ferocity of the Hunnic warriors, they were outnumbered and outmaneuvered. The Romans and Visigoths, working in unison, managed to push back the Huns, dealing a significant blow to Attila's forces. Attila's invincibility was shattered. His aura of invulnerability, which had once terrified his enemies, was no more. The Battle of the Catalanian Plains was the beginning of the end for Attila and his Hunnic Empire. His defeat weakened his hold over his subjects and exposed the cracks in his empire. Discontent simmered among his people, and rival chieftains began to challenge his authority. Yet, the defeat did not break Attila. He remained a formidable foe, a force to be reckoned with. Despite the setback, he was not a man to be easily subdued. He regrouped his forces, determined to strike back to reclaim his lost glory. Attila's fall was not a sudden plunge, but a gradual decline. His defeat at the Battle of the Catalonian Plains was a significant blow, but it did not spell immediate doom. It marked the beginning of a series of setbacks and challenges that would eventually lead to his downfall. Though defeated, Attila was not yet finished. His spirit remained unbroken, his ambition undiminished. Even in defeat, he was a force to be reckoned with, a reminder of the terrifying power of the Huns. His story serves as a testament to the fact that even the mightiest can fall, but it is how they rise again that truly defines them. Every story has an end, but what was the end of Attila? Attila the Hun, a name that once struck fear into the hearts of Romans, met his end in the year 453 AD. The circumstances of his demise, however, are shrouded in mystery, as intriguing as the man himself. His death wasn't the result of a heroic battle or a grand duel of power. No, it was something much more mundane and unexpected. The great warrior, who had survived countless battles, allegedly succumbed to a severe nosebleed on his wedding night. Dressed in his finery, celebrating his marriage to a young woman named Ildico, Attila retired for the night, never to wake again. He was found dead the next morning, drowned in his own blood. A far cry from the battlefield end one might expect for such a fearsome warrior. The death of Attila sent shockwaves through the Hunnic Empire. The man who had led them to numerous victories, who had built an empire that stretched from Germany to the Ural River, and from the Danube River to the Baltic Sea, was suddenly gone. His death marked the beginning of the end for the Hunnic Empire, which would crumble within a few short years of his passing. There is, however, a veil of mystery that surrounds Attila's death. Some historians suggest that his demise might not have been as accidental as it seems. There are theories, albeit unproven, that Attila was murdered, possibly poisoned by his new bride, or perhaps by his own people. To this day, the exact circumstances of his death remain a subject of debate among historians. Thus ends the tale of Attila, a man who was once the terror of Rome, leaving behind a legacy that would echo through the ages. His life, his conquests, and even his death continue to captivate us, reminding us of a time when the Hunnic Empire was a formidable force and its leader, a man to be both revered and feared. Please like and subscribe to the channel.